Welcome back to tonight's lecture, uh, part two. I'm going to talk about some of the other things that um, PR people send out to the media to, uh, in addition to a press release, to, to let people know what's happening. Um, one of them is a news advisory. And basically, a news advisory is a notice that we give to media outlets. Um, basically, it's a heads up for upcoming news events or stories. Um, Usually, if it's a notice of an event, it's usually sent out two or three days before the event, followed by calls to the reporter or emails to ensure they got it. Um, they tend to be very short, don't have to include a lot of background details or information or quotes. You just have to offer enough information to convince the reporter to cover the story in a 10-year press conference or other newsworthy event. It's more of a who, what, where, when, how kind of a thing of an event uh, that's sent out a few days in advance. So basically, in a nutshell, it's news on short notice. Sometimes uh, we have to send out a release on a very short notice. Something might have just come up. A dignitary came into town. A, um, an event happened or a, you know, somebody in the, uh, that we didn't expect to be there is going to be there. Say a president decides they want to be, speak at our campus and we have to tell <laughs> the media really quick on something. Um, so it's something we usually try to put out there, usually on short notice. So basically you're not putting a lot of details in, you're just trying to let them know the very basic facts. Okay, we can add more to a press release when people show up or as we get more information uh, afterwards. Sometimes we can use this as a reminder of the day of or before an event. So say we sent out a press release three or four weeks ago, uh, letting the media know something was going to happen, like an open house or a press conference or something like that. A news advisory could be just sort of a reminder, letting them know it's, it's coming up in, in like in a day or two. Okay, so it's just a short little message saying, "Hey, this is happening." Um, again, you don't have to make. You can. A lot of these are tend to be written off in, in three or four paragraphs. Sometimes they could be literally a who, what, where, when, why. As I, I mentioned here, <laughs> the who, what, where, when, why, how. Okay. And I'll show you a couple of examples of what, what this could look like, and I'll have some links to this underneath uh, today's lecture. And basically, again, just facts. So here's an example of what a media advisory could look like. Um, you would have the date on there, again, the contact information, similar to what you'd have with a press release. However, we're going to skip a lot of the details of that. So we're really going to put um, some basic information about the story, um, what's about to happen, and we can literally label it what, when, where, who, and why we're doing this. Okay, again, the three asterisk marks on the bottom. And here's another example of, of a longer one, uh, same scenario. Uh, this is about the annual Brazilian Music Institute returns to the UF on Monday, May 12th. Again, got some contact information up there. We label it as a media advisory. Again, there's a, a short paragraph or two on the top that explains what's happening and some of the details underneath there. Again, you don't have to label it who, what, where, when, why, or how, uh, but you can. And, and, and a lot of reporters are okay with that. So it could either be a couple paragraphs or it could just be labeled like this. And sometimes there is another one for um, the Wellspring Living raises funds through upscale resale store in Kennesaw, saw however you pronounce that. <laughs> okay, again, same format, and even they threw in a little bit of background information. So, in a nutshell, a news advisory is a very short um, letter, or email, or, or like a release that we send out to the media on short notice, or if we want to remind media of something uh, uh, of a press release or something we, we've sent in the, in previously. A pitch letter is another thing that we might send to a reporter or an editor. And basically the concept of that is it's a brief letter or an email that we send out um, short, never longer than a page or you know a couple of paragraphs. It's sometimes written to accompany a press release, a media advisory, or a full press kit. Something we send out to kind of like get the reporter or the editor's interest. It has one purpose, to pique that journalist's interest in your story. You don't have to tell the whole story, but rather teasers for the meat of your story angle. So basically it's designed to um, get them interested. 
And most of the time, this just sent out as an email uh, to the reporter, or it could be a letter if, if, you're some, if you have some time to play with. Um, you start out with your best shot in the first sentence, you try to get the reporter to know something that will make them stop and say, hey, I never knew that, or that's an interesting angle for a story. Okay? So you're trying to pique their interest, trying to get them want to cover your story. Um, and sometimes that's a phone call, too, in addition to a, a pitch letter. Um, you might send an email, you might follow up with a phone call. Um, and this is helpful if you really know the reporters uh, ahead of time. So basically, in your story, say what you're writing. You know, begin with your reason. I, I'm, I'm writing to suggest a story about, or I'd like to recommend an interview with. Explain the premise in, in not, more, not more than two sentences. Like, sort of keep it short. Tell them what you're, why you're writing. Is it newsworthy? Is it a good interview, a good story to cover? Is it relevant to something going on currently or current events? Okay, and keep it fairly short, especially the story idea in one or two paragraphs. How will the story work? What will it involve? What role will you play in assisting the reporter? And timing can be everything. Sometimes you might pitch a story and it, it, you know, it may be something going on at the right time that, that really gets the reporter's interest. And they want to cover the story. They want to tell it. And it could be a, a hot topic. And you might have a great source for this type of thing, too. Watch your super lack or superlatives. Um, you want to don't say like first, only, greatest, biggest, fun time will be had for all. Just like the press was. You don't want to make it sound like an advertisement. You're pitching a news story. You're trying to explain why this story is newsworthy. Make sense? If you're having um, an interview, having a reporter interview somebody, so make sure you you give them the topics that that person can talk about. So find the three types of expertise your client can speak on and, and do it in bullet form so um, that the reporter understands what it is. Keep it short, like I said, don't no more than 350 words, edit it and edit it down so it's something that's understandable and short. Have all the background information that a reporter might need um, and have your press releases ready so if you pitch a story and they say, okay, I'm all for it, you've got everything ready to roll. So again, most reporters hate to do a lot of research. If you can give them as much as they can, it saves a lot of valuable time to them. And I'll try to put an example or two of what a pitch letter could look like underneath, uh, the, under, underneath the slideshow too, so you can download a somewhat of a template. Fact sheets are pretty easy too. They're basic information that you want a reporter to also have. Sometimes these are in a press kit, sometimes you put them out as a separate type of a thing. So it's an information or facts about a product or a company. It's usually one page, maybe it's one side or two, but it's basic statistics, okay? It's usually loaded with facts, figures, charts, or itemized or bolded points. A lot of things you, you may, when you write your press release, um, you may not dump a lot of that information up, but it's stuff that a reporter might want to pull some of those facts or figures into their story. You should elaborate on your company news release that you send out and not merely repeat information, but have stuff that you wouldn't normally see in that release. Okay, so it's statistics, it's facts, it's information, it's charts, you know, some visual things even that, that a reporter can pull into their story, um, some numbers and things that would, would help enhance your news release if they want to some examples of what they look like. Here's a couple, and, and I'll again include these underneath uh, the this um, this uh, lecture also. So watch for the links below, and you'll be able to get some downloads of these. But as you can see, this is a generic one. What it would look like, showing different headings and different facts and numbers and figures and stuff that you might include into your fact sheet. There's another one from an actual company about robotics. Um, you can see some some. How many people participated in studies, their mission statement, their position on certain things, type of products that they have, their growth spurts over the years, some milestones, um, a picture of their, their founder, a lot of numbers of, of key metrics of phone number, or I'm sorry, uh, costs and percentages and things like that. Um, so it's a lot of statistics that maybe a reporter could utilize. 
Same here is a community college fact sheet that I found. A uh, committee of psychology teachers at community colleges. Again, this is more of a paragraph form, a couple of bullets, statistics, and different titles. So if you have different titles, make sure you put the facts that you want to show under those titles. And another example, same thing. Again, sometimes they're just bullets, sometimes they're just numbers, sometimes it's got contact information and locations of where your uh, events are, your company is. And here's another one. Okay. And the final piece that uh, public relations uh, professionals will use to convey information uh, basically ties up a lot of things we just talked about, the press releases, the news advisories, the fact sheets, and things like that, into what's called a press kit. So a press kit is often prepared when a company announces a new product or sponsors a major event, let's say, it's usually frequently elaborate. It gives the media representatives a thorough background of information, provides them with information in various formats. So you're basically trying to give the reporter as much as they can. So you don't have to keep calling you or trying to get information or you have to keep sending photos or, or releases out to everybody. This is all encapsulated in, 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 in one thing. And a physical one would be given out to the media or passed out at news conferences, much like our PSTI one was. Um, when the reporters showed up at our, our groundbreaking event, we literally gave them the press kit, which had all the information in it, so they had it all in one place. Basically, a physical uh, a press kit would be basically one of those large folders with, with pockets in it. Um, we would contain the news releases, fact sheets, statistics, and stuff like that. Background information it might be a history piece that goes in there, uh, brochures, uh, flyers, those kind of things, company materials. You might have photographs in there or CDs or if, they, if people still use CDs that much or flash drives even with all the photos and information on it also. And uh, article re, uh, reprints. So if there's a story written somewhere else about it or a, a, a history of something, we put those in there also. And photos of what something like that could be. You can see it's in a folder there. This had a couple different flyers in it with information, contact information, praise, background stories, um, and about uh, interviews, bios, that kind of thing for a, a, this was a looks like a book, a novel. Here's some more showing some stickers and you know survival aid kits and things like that. I've seen them where they're elaborate where it might be a plate in forks for something or uh, for a restaurant that's opening, um, or there might be a clothing store. One of our stu my students one time made a press kit with out of denim because she was going to open up a custom jeans place. <laughs> um, so you you can make this as interesting as you want. Uh, you can see there's brochures and flyers and information in there um, about their to what they're doing. If it's a band or something like that, they might have an actual CD or a flash drive with all the music in it, so, so uh, the media can sample it. Um, business cards, um, events coming up, some background and history of what the band is and who they are, bios, all that stuff you think that the media might need. Electronic press kit is the same idea. It's basically you're giving, you know, giving the press as much information as possible to help them with their coverage. Same info as what you see in a printed kit, but it's going to be on your website. Um, some of it will be just stories. You can allow them to have the ability to download what you have up there, too. So they can copy and paste information into their news story. And it's usually found in the press room of your company's website. When we talked about the online newsrooms a couple of weeks back, that's the same kind of thing. This is where you're going to put all of that kind of information. And just a couple of samples of what that would look like. Again, it's a news page you would have all that information on a website thing. Here's one for the Red Cross with media contacts, information. Um, press kits are up there. You see press releases, um, advertising they've done, photo library, video library. Give it a place where people could download and access that information very quickly. I hope that all makes sense. There's a lot of stuff going on here about what, what the stuff we send out. So we talked about the press release. That's really the most important thing that most people put out there. Sometimes you need to put a press advisor or news advisor out very quickly. 
fact sheets are important so you're gathering all these statistics and information to put together in a sheet to make all your numbers or statistics and that stuff available to the media also um, and sometimes you need to be elaborate to have a whole press kit together um, and don't forget you got to pitch these stories to the media so this is a little bit of a uh, some of the things we're going to add to our, our, our overall campaign. All right, finally, we're going to talk about the actual final project. You're, you're going to write a PR campaign. So basically, we're going to take everything we just learned up to this year, plus the next two um, lectures, and put together a campaign for something. Um, basically, you've got to imagine a business or an organization, an institute, a, a cause, or some other activity that you find interesting. I want you to create a PR campaign around it. You're going to promote it, your, your, its mission, it's a major event or a new product, something that you want to get the word out about. Okay, And again, try to make it something you like or could actually put together. Don't make it something that's a national campaign or anything like that. Sort of keep it local. Um, national campaigns are huge and, and require large-scale PR campaigns. We want to do something that's sort of localized that um, would be easily accessible and you can write a, a short paper about, okay? There's two parts to this. First, you want to write a paper that basically details your campaign plan. So everything we kind of talked about, what's your problem, your situation, uh, what are your objectives, what's your strategy, um, who your audience is, um, what uh, tactics you're going to use to promote it, and what your final results are going to be. All right, so that paper is going to be uh, put together with that information, plus a couple of other um, things you want to add to your campaign that I've also included in the paper. So read through that, make sure you understand it, and pepper it in with, with um, you know, what kind of a crisis might come up, um, what kind of persuasion techniques you would use, um, a couple of the other questions that we have in there. Second part of this, I want you to also include a physical piece as to what you would use for your PR campaign. I want you to create a fact sheet of stats and figures of what might be important. So if you're writing about, let's say, a Red Cross blood drive or something like that, I want some statistics about um, how much blood is needed for uh, area hospitals. Um, how many people donate blood? What are the steps for donating blood? Things like that. Any sort of stats or facts that you want to put in there. I need you to write a press release, as we've been doing, of your event or your product or whatever you're doing. I um, also want you to write a news advisory and a pitch letter. So you're writing a pitch letter to the reporters saying why they should cover this. And I want you to create a press kit. You don't actually have to make the press kit. But if you could describe what would be in the press kit, it would be a press release, it could be um, the fact sheet, it could be a CD or a flash drive with photos of certain things. And describe what you would put into that, okay? So the go to your assignment section, all of it's there. I, I've read it in one of those content boxes, but also you could download a PDF or a Word document of this. And under the link for this um, particular uh, presentation, you'll see a sample PR campaign that you could draw from. You could format it ex pretty much exactly the same way or something similar. And through the next two lectures, we'll talk about the campaign and how to shape it. Um, and if you get stuck with coming up with something, chat with me, email me, whatever, and we'll work out a plan to, to kind of come up with an idea for you. Okay? So that's it in a nutshell. Again, if you have any questions or suggestions or anything like that, please... Try to reach out to me either through the chats, through an email, um, and we'll try to work something out. All right, thank you.